Christians walk in this manner. Part 4. Christians walk in this manner. Romans chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15. We read some sound, solid principles how Christians should behave, how Christians should walk. So with this caption, Christians walk in this manner, we started meditating word by word or verse by verse from Romans chapter 12, as the Lord helps us, we'll be continuing 13, 14, and 15. In part 1, we covered uh, verses 1 to 10, 7 points. In part Two, we are able to cover from verses 11 and 12 again 7 points 8 to 14 points in part 3 from verse 13 to 16 we cover there are about 10 points that is points 15 to 24 15 to 24 today we are doing part 4 I love to cover from verse 17 to 21, five verses, as the Lord could help me. Uh, just we go through the previous passages. In verses 1 and 2, there the Lord says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God. So don't, don't conform to the fashions of the world. Because of the renewing of your mind there should be a, 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 an outward change. You should be transformed. Your form must change. Your hairstyle, your dress, the way you look, the way, what you do with your eyebrows, your lips. Earlier you are using all the members of your body for wrong purpose abominable things for lust. Now because the renewing of your mind, whether you dress or how you do your hair and your makeup, everything, it is what is the will of God, what is good. So we, are, we have become more sober. So Christians walk in this manner. In verse 2, here it says, think soberly. The second thing, think soberly. And the third point, we studied from verses 4, uh, from verse 4 to 8. According to the gift the Lord has given you, the talent, a gift the Lord has given you, help one another. And from verse 9, let your love be without dissimulation, without any hypocrisy. And the fifth point, we studied from verse 9 again, abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good. From verse 10, sixth point, be kindly affection one to another. That's type of a, a blood relative, a natural relative. As your own daughter, as your own son, as your own brother, that natural affection. Be, have that affection, that love with one another. Verse 10, the second part, the seventh point. In honor, preferring one another. Be first to honor the honor others. Don't have that arrogance. Don't have the pride. Others should come and talk to me. Others should salute me. I only respond. No, you you be first to honoring one another. That all these seven points we covered in part one. In part two, verses eleven and twelve. Not slothful in business. That is, don't be disinterested in your work, whether it's a kitchen work or cooking or uh, working in, in a factory or ministry, whatever that work may be, as a Christian, Christians walk in this man. Whatever you do, do with interest. And in business, that's literally, be diligent, be focused. Whatever you do, you be focused in it. Fervent in spirit, that type of a bubbling joy. Even if you are a uh, sweeping the floor. Do it with a bubbling joy. Do it with a bubbling joy. So whatever the work you are doing, 
be fervent in the spirit it's be boiling be bubbling joy serving the lord as a slave to the lord you are doing that with joy because you are god's slave you are servant to the lord we are not servant to anybody we are serving one another we do our business with joy because we are serving the lord and verse 12 rejoicing in hope now the faith, well, we have got a lively hope because that hope is so strong we rejoice over whatever we may be doing and patient in tribulation that's not a tribulation is not a big, a big ubatra mental that simple word is pressure under pressure we are pressed on all sides under pressure be cool be patient christians walk in this manner and continuing in prayer that is totally continue to depend on the lord continue in prayer means you are continuance in depending on the lord that was the second part the third part from verse 13 point number 15 from verse 13 uh, distributing to the necessity of saints share whatever the gifts you have got whatever the talents you have got share that with the saints who are ministering to you as i was explaining to you probably you can help them driving it doesn't mean that you become their driver see your pastor has to go somewhere today in today's concept your pastor has to go somewhere so you can use your talent share to the nurses it's not only giving money in every possible way helping pastor ma in their necessity what they need in their necessity helping them so that's christians walk in this manner so when gently when i go out somebody in the church they go and stay with the sister why, why do i say this helping in the necessity sharing in the necessity of the servant of god it is necessary somebody to be with sister it is necessary helping in that necessity so find out what is the that's the love find out what is the necessity of that servant of god and try to share your talent your time uh, your grace you were availability share that the little little meaning sharing to the necessity or to the demands and requirements of saints point number 16 given to hospitality entertaining strangers when you see somebody a new person just smile at him shake hands with him today we are not receiving strangers to our house we are not giving coffee to them but you can give a smile to them especially when you see a stranger in the church say hello to him you introduce yourself to him you can go over and talk to him it's not necessary that he should come and talk to you so that's a christians must entertain strangers point number 17 bless them which persecutes you 18 don't curse them don't desire anything bad for them uh, point number 19 rejoice with them that do rejoice 20 weep with them that weep 21 be of the same mind one toward another the literal meaning is it is not that you can have the same mind with everybody what you want others to do for that have that mind to do the same for others what you want others to do for you have the same mind this is how you want others to treat you in that way you treat others that's the same mind how you to be accepted same way accept others so that's exactly it means and point number 22 mind not high things it's not it doesn't mean that we should not have ambition in life it means we should not be ambitious 
especially on the earthly blessings. And number 23, verse 16, the latter part. But uh, condescend to men of low estate. The literal meaning is take off with them. Take off with them. It doesn't mean that you become one with them. It is take off with them. Take off with them. You can't say, no, no, I'll take off on a different platform. So Jesus became a man, but he was without sin. He was without sin. He left heaven and came. But we saw the glory of the Father in him. He was one among us. But he was sinless. The literally meaning, oh, I cannot talk with poor people. I cannot talk with illiterates. No. Talk to them in a way that they can understand them, but don't be one with them. See, I, we went to a hut. There were some uh, pigs lying in that hut. They gave me something to drink. Very comfortably I was drinking there. I was not making for I can't sit with the pigs and drink. Literally pigs were lying by my side. When they offered me something to drink, I went for a house visitation. Really I was comfortable. I, I was not finding it difficult. It doesn't mean that I should live only in a hut. I must have two pigs around me whenever I want to drink something. That's rubbish. You can't no, no, I cannot be in a hut. No, no, I cannot drink something when there are some pigs. Condescend. Condescend with them. But at the same time, you don't be with them, be among them. I, I, I do believe that the Lord will help you understand the difference point number 24, the last point on the third part. Be not wise in your own conceits, in your own opinion. Be not wise just in your own opinion. Today we are going to study from verse 17. Verse 17 is a very important passage, this part through Christians walk in this manner. In your family, in your ministerial situation, your business, walk in this manner. We will go to verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. The little word that evil is Injury. Somebody has hurt you. As a Christian, don't hurt that person back. Why you use bad words to hurt that person? Why you hit that person to hurt that person? Why are you insulting that person to hurt that person? Why do you hurt that person because you are hurt? Why does the wife has uh, hurt the husband because he has hurt her? Why has he hurt her? Because she has hurt her. We hurt others mostly because we are hurt. Or at least when we are hurt, when the husband has hurt us, in our own way or in her own way, the wife hurts the husband. She uses a word that could give pain to him. But the Bible says Christians walk in this manner. When you are hurt, don't hurt back. It's possible or impossible, I believe. The Bible doesn't tell us something that is totally impossible. That's why I said use it in your day-to-day -day practical life. You can make a note of these things. I think it's the point number 24 in this series. Don't hurt others because you are hurt. He has done something that has hurt you. So immediately you want to do something or you want to say something that could hurt that person. And number two, 
in verse 17 provide things honest in the sight of all men provide things honest in the sight of all men what do you mean by provide the Greek word is entirely different you are blessed to listen to all this the Greek word is entirely different the Greek word means consider in advance in Tamil we read it's not in front of them in advance consider in advance things honest Yedi yogiyo. Yogiyam andu the apdi. The Tamil word yogiyam is uh, more touching. Yepdi dress panna yogiyam arukum. Na vittu varumbodhu yepdi vandha yogiyam arukum. Yeh manavi, yeh pullegal, yeh kanavan, yeh vittar. In a Madikano, in a yogi is then an ekano. Now, you put it behave and not yogi a mark. A veil is a letter in a yogi in a ding. Consider that in advance. That English word provide means provide for that, create a situation for that. So, you are working in a college. Your colleagues must think that you are yogian, not honest and yogian. Your students must think yogian. The management must think yogian. You are working in a college. Everybody must think, oh, he is a yogiast. She is a yogiasti. Yogimanal. See, our Simon is a chartered accountant. He's a senior chartered accountant. His colleagues, his co-workers, the non-chartered account people, and his clients. Am I right? Four types of people. So they all must think Simon is an yogian. Provide means, the Greek word is, consider in advance. What should I do how should I dress? How should I walk in? How should, I, how should my behavior be that they will consider me yogian? You understand? Christians walk in this manner. Consider in advance to be honest. It's not honest. I don't know exactly what we can say for yogian in English. What is the opposite of yogian? As I, I, many times I have said, in Tamil, if there is a munnuttu, there's something comes before a prefix, ah, that in, gives the antonym, the opposite of that word, nidhi anidhi, nyayam aniyayam, yogyam ayogyam. Is yogyan ayogyapaya? Apana ame ayogyan. Children will think, no? Ayoki. Ayoki. So are you Yokian or Ayokian? Every father, the child will not think, oh my father is a role model. My dear brother, my dear sister, consider in advance. Munna dahave, Ilam and Sharkuman Bahi, Yoki and Ahong like Khan Bikan Hard, Munna Dahi, Hunger Poetry, Adi Trikir. A pulling in a yogi and a pacuno, in a Kambakata working in a yogi and a pacuno, in a yoki a paila paco kuda. Oh, yoki, eh? Thirude, eh? Puye, eh? You are singing Marco. So Christians walk in this manner, this must see that you are yogi as then. Yokian and 25 and 26 
again in verse 17 you know uh, 27 that's in verse 18 if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all if it be possible live peaceably with all men living peaceably if somebody says it's living peaceably with all men is not possible with, except my husband how horrible it would be ella manushanude samanama irukkonde en veetukarana thavara abdin sonne avala singam irukku ella rodi live peaceably Again, many a time we mistake that English, but if possible, it is not possible what to do. How to live peaceably with that man? It is impossible. How to live peaceably with that woman? It is impossible. So there Paul doesn't say whether it is possible or impossible. Paul says that little meaning is, explore all possibilities within your command. As much as lieth in you. As much as lieth in you. Explore all possibilities. It's not if it is possible or it is not possible. What are the possibilities? I can live in peace with my neighbor. As much as it is in my command. I'm not worried how he is. I'm not worried how she is. I'm not worried what type of neighbors I got, what type of colleagues I got. I'm not worried about them. As much as it is possible with me. The possibilities in my command. As it lies in me. As it lies in me. If I can smile, I can smile. If I can extend the help, I can extend the help. So you explore all the possibilities instead of saying my husband is bad, instead of saying my wife is bad, find out how it is possible with you, not with him. He is bad. It doesn't mean because of that you should also be bad. You explore the possibilities with you. It's not whether it is he is bad or he is good. The possibilities in me, the grace that I have got, the Bible knowledge I have got, the background, the family background I have got, the strength I have got, the knowledge I have got, the language I have got. With all those possibilities, I try to live peace with that person. But we, what we do, I cannot live in peace with that person because his language is bad. I cannot live with that person in peace because his bad habits. I cannot live in peace with that person. He is a cheat. He is a liar. He is a rogue. I cannot. It is not possible to live with him because he has got such and such and such and such and trait. Just I am telling you the ulta. He is that make. Okay, you leave it. What are the possibilities that you possess? The, your strength, your grace, that you can live in peace. Explore the possibilities. Christians, live in this manner. Explore all the possibilities in your command as it lieth in you. As much as it lies in you. Your command. The background from which you came. What all you learned from your parents? What all you learned from your church? That is your strength. Explore those possibilities that you will be able to live in peace with that person. And we go to verse 18. So the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 14, Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. So it's very, very important. Point number 28. Point number 28. That's in verse 19. Dearly beloved, it's very, very important. Dearly beloved, avenge not, take vengeance, revenge. Avenge not yourselves. Don't take 
vengeance on others, on yourself. But rather, give praise unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. You don't retaliate. You don't take vengeance. He said this, so I said this. He did this, so I did this. I want to punish him. I want him to learn a lesson. I will punish him. Don't take vengeance. The Bible says don't take vengeance. Why it says don't take vengeance is very clear. Dearly beloved, don't take vengeance. But rather give place or room unto wrath. Unto God to be angry. Unto God to be angry. For it is written, vengeance is mine. That vengeance is means giving punishment. Palik pali. Giving punishment for that mistake is mine. Giving that punishment is mine. So you don't give that punishment. Give room for God to give that punishment and I will repay for that mistake, for that crime, what the fellow has done, I will repay, I will punish him. Exactly with all interest calculated, it's a simple interest or compound interest or meter vetti, the Lord will calculate it very carefully and the Lord will repay. What that fellow should get, he will surely get, the Lord will do it. You don't take vengeance. You don't repay. He has hurt you, so don't hurt him back. Don't hurt him back. Allow God to do that. Give room for wrath. The literal meaning, allow God to be angry. Instead of God is getting angry, God should not get sympathy on that person. Say for example, to explain, come, come here man. In an angry mood or something, just he slapped me. Just imagine he slapped me. Immediately I got annoyed, I hit him black and white. Instead of God is getting angry on him, the way I am hitting back this fellow, what will happen? God will take sympathy on him. So instead of God is getting angry on him, what will happen? God will be getting sympathy on this fellow. When God gets sympathy on him, who will get kicking from God? Already I got a slap from him. And the way I am hitting him, if God takes sympathy on this fellow, God will start hitting me. I can give you a number of illustrations of the Bible. Say, God wanted Babylon to punish the people. When they do it in excess, God was punishing Babylon. So God wants to punish him. If I started punishing him, at times God would be very angry and God will punish me. So allow God to get wrath. Allow God to get wrath. When the Lord becomes angry, the Lord knows how to handle this fellow. I need not do that work. I give you seven reasons. You can just make a note of it. I got a, a lot of things to share with you today apart from this message. So I'm going a little fast. I want to go. Uh, seven points I tell you why you should not take avenge. Number one, no crime can be punished twice. The legal things. No crime, no mistake can be punished. You cannot punish and God cannot punish. You punish a person for that mistake, then God will not punish that person. God will not do anything with that person. Your husband has done something wrong and you punish your husband for that and God will not correct your person. Your husband will not be corrected by God because already you have dealt with him. For the same mistake, two persons, uh, uh, twice a person cannot be punished. 
That's the legal requirement number one. And number two, you can make a note of it. Punishment should match God's penal code. So we've got Indian penal code, IPC. So God's penal code. For this mistake, this is the punishment. For this crime, this is the punishment. We should not give a greater punishment, we cannot give a lesser punishment. When we give a greater punishment, suppose it's a 40 lashes, you give 41, then you have broken, broken the law. You are given 39 lashes, you are not given the punishment that is exactly required for that mistake. So whatever the God's penal code, where God wants 40 lashes, a thirty lashes, a hundred lashes, we must know what God wants, we can't give more, we can't give less, and the force we use can be more than what God wants us to do, or it can be less than what God wants us to do. So we cannot punish a person, because we don't know what is the exact punishment we should give. And number three, a law-abiding situation will never take law in his own hands. Many times you see in the newspaper, so somebody has done something wrong. So we should hand him over to the police. We can't hit him. We can't take the law in our hands. There is a law enforcing machinery in our government. So we can't law we can't take law in our hands. Similarly, we can't take God's in our, in our law in our hands and we can't take vengeance. So what is that we can do? We can cry to God, we can ask God to punish, we can wait for God to punish. We are giving room for God's wrath. We are giving room for God's wrath. God is watching the whole thing. The evil that person is doing against you. The evil that person is doing against you. God is watching. God's anger is kindled. When the time comes, God knows how to handle it. So it says any law abiding situation will never take law in his own hand. Point number four. There are many chances to win the offender to your side. When the Lord handles that person, you've got a lot of chances to win that person for your side. Maybe the Lord will give repentance, the Bible says, they'll come and fall at your feet. They'll come and lick the sole of your foot. The Lord is able to do it. So if you have already hit them, you have spit on their face, you have tortured them, you have done something, even when the Lord convicts, they will not come and fall at your feet. They will not come and say sorry to you. Because you, you have already offended them. It's one thing, your enemy is punished. But it's a greater victory, your enemy becomes your friend. It's a greater victory, your enemy comes and falls at your feet. Which is greater victory, your enemy is killed. That's not a great victory. Your enemy joins in your army, that's a greater victory. That's a greater victory. So keep the doors open. You don't punish that person. There are a lot of chances that you can win that person when you don't punish. When you show vengeance, not only punishing, when you show vengeance, you can never win that person to your side. You're taking revenge. You're taking revenge. That ends the story. So you're closing the door for winning that person on your side. Point number five. One who judges must be with no fault. You are taking vengeance and it is an absolute rule. A judge cannot be a person with faults. 
we, we, in the worldly sense we have got judges corrupt judges but even the world doesn't like a corrupt judge a judge must be without fault so when you judge other persons when you are to throw the first stone you must be without guilt have you got the right you say you are a liar have you got the right to say that you are a liar? Are you blameless? May not be to that extent. Whether you jump three-fourths of the well, or only fifty percent of the well, or only five percent of the well, or ninety-five percent of the well, all will fall into the same well. You can't be happy that I jumped 95% and fell into the well. And you jumped only 10% and fell into the well. The end result, you both have fallen into the well. It's the same well. How can you be very uh, proudish? Oh, I jumped 95%. 95%. Those who jump 95% fall into the well, they may hit against the wall and break the nose and fall. At least those who jump only 10% or 20%, they'll fall straight into the well. That's the only difference. What's the big bragging about that you cross 95%? Can you say 10% you are blameless? To blame the other person? It doesn't mean that we have to gloss over others' mistakes. If the Lord has given you a responsibility, a role, as a father, you've got a role to play. As a father, you've got a role to play. The Bible says, parents are father, lead the child in the way it should go. The Bible doesn't say, husbands, lead your wives in the way they should go. There the headship of the husband is different from the headship of a father. Because I'm husband, I cannot punish my wife and ask her to... I, I cannot lead her in the way she should go. She is mature. She is God's child. As a husband, I have to love her. I have to protect her. I can't instruct her what she should do, what she should not do. But as a father, I got great responsibility on my children. As a head of institution, you may have certain responsibilities. As an officer, you may have some responsibility. That is different. You may have to punish people according to the rule. You may have to dismiss them. That's a rule book. If they have done this mistake, you have to take this action. You have to give a memo. That's a different thing. It's not taking vengeance. But on a personal ground, because he has hurt you, you want to hurt back. You want to take vengeance. Now legally, you are not perfect to pause a judgment on the other person. Number six, when I was waiting in the presence of the Lord, the Lord dictated these things to me. Our judgment, our justice may have flaws. My understanding, my perception, may be wrong may be wrong I may be wrong the, am I wrong the other person may be right so in taking vengeance or giving a punishment or take revenge I have to be very careful I may be wrong he may be right so I have to be very careful about it and the eleventh one the Lord showed me the Lord says it is mine doing the duty of that judge Finding out what is the case, go through the case history and okay, this is the punishment I should give. This is how that punishment should be given. That's my duty. When I take vengeance, I worship his authority. I, I take the place of God. It's horrible. That was the work of Satan. And I'll sit on his throne. I'll sit on his judgment seat. So as a Christian, because this is one of the things easily we hear. We judge others. We punish others. We retaliate. We take revenge. Tit for tat. It's very wrong. 
It's not a, it is not of a Christian. Christians walk in this man. You don't have any right absolutely under heaven on the earth to take vengeance on somebody who is doing wrong. And point number 29 in verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Huh? Am I reading it right? If then enemy hunger, feed him. Okay, that's right. If he thirst, give him drink. Okay. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. It is just a quotation from Proverbs chapter 25. You can make a note of it. It is a quotation from Proverbs chapter 25 verses 21 and 22. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Verse 22, for thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head and the Lord shall reward thee the Lord shall reward thee your husband has hurt you or your wife has hurt you or he or she is very hungry give something to eat they are very thirsty. Get to that person a tumbler, a glass of water, a lime juice, a nice lime juice. Give something to drink. He is very thirsty. Okay, immediately you feel that his love may be kindled. He would be very affectionate to you. By doing this, you, the, here the Bible says you heap coals of fire on his head. Should we do that? By do, at least we keep a bag of ice on his head, it's okay. When your eyes such a matter. You are heaping coals of fire on his head. What does it actually mean? There may be different interpretations. You are asking God's punishment. See, then there is no love. There is no love. But what you are doing, literally you are asking God's punishment. You are heaping coals of fire on His head. They heap coals of fire on His head. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. What does it actually mean? They take the uh, raw war, silver war, gold war, war, Tamil, what they say? That war, wadi. Okay. They take that war, that silver, with all the clay, sand, everything. They keep on its head and also at the bottom. Coals of fire, they keep fire on its head. Keep fire on its head is an expression. Keep, keep, more and more, more and more. Give water, give coffee, give sweet, give more and more. So whatever you are doing, it is a fire that can melt that ore and the dross will go away and silver will come separately. You have to melt it. So this fire is not just a punishment. You show your love more and more, more and more, more and more that that ore can be melt, the dross can go, and go away and only the silver or that gold can be separated. Till you can win that person. 
till you can win, win that person show your love show your love show your actions of love when i was preparing this a very fitting example i can get from tirukkural that's one of the reasons we say tirukkural is a christian literature because this principle is not found in any other in literature any other tamil literature there are ample tamil literature to show a principle absolutely against this the earlier sangha literatures but the same thing is found later in saiva saiva philosophy saiva siddhanta that's why we say all these things are christians are influenced by christianity before tiruvalluvar nobody has ever said that in any tamil literature or i believe there's no other literature in the world with this principle next bible we can see this principle only in tirukkura inna seidare oruttal avar nana nannayam seididal inna seidare oruttal avar nana nannayam seididal the literal meaning inna seidare those who have done something wrong to you inna seidare ஒருத்தல் பனிஷ் பண்றது ஒருத்தல் டு பனிஷ் தம் இன்னா செய்தாரே ஒருத்தல் டு பனிஷ் தோஸ் அ டன் சம்திங் ராங் டு யூ அவர் நான அவர் வெட்கப்படும்படிக்கு தான் செய்த தவறுக்காக அவர் வெட்கப்படும்படிக்கு அவர் நான நன்னயம் செய்து விடல் நல்ல காரியத்தை செய் வெறும் நல்ல காரியத்தை செய்யாது அவர் இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் இரிட்டேட் பண்ணுற மாதிரி தண்ணி கொடுக்காத இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் அவரை இரிட்டேட் பண்ணுற மாதிரி சாப்பாடு போடாத இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் இரிட்டேட் பண்ணுற மாதிரி கிண்டல் அடிக்காத எவ்வளவு நல்ல காரியம் செய்யணும் அவர் எப்போ உருகுவாரோ அவர் உருகிறதுக்கு எவ்வளவு நல்ல காரியம் செய்யணும் அவ்வளோ நல்ல காரியம் செய் இட் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி கிவிங் ஃபுட் இட்ஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி கிவிங் வாட்டர் குட் திங் அப்பான் குட் திங் குட் திங் அப்பான் குட் திங் ஹீ வைக்க போர் மாதிரி ஹி குவி அக்னி தலையில் கொட்டு என்ற அக்னி தலையில் குவிச்சு வை நல்ல காரியத்துக்கு மேல நல்ல காரியம் அவர் வெக்கப்படுற அளவுக்கு யூ கேவ் ஒன் ஃபுட் ஹீஸ் இஸ் அரகெண்ட் ஹே கேவ் வாட்டர் ஹீஸ் மோர் அரகெண்ட் கிவ் மோர் கிவ் மோர் டூ மோர் குட் திங் டூ மோர் குட் திங் டில் வாட் டைம் அவர் நான்ற வரைக்கும் அவர் வெக்கப்படுற வரைக்கும் தின்னு தொலை அவர் நான்ற வரைக்கும் அவர் வெக்கப்படுற வரைக்கும் அந்த மருமக வெக்கப்படுற வரைக்கும் அந்த மாமியார் வெக்கப்படுற வரைக்கும் ஐயோ இவ்வளவெல்லாம் கொடுமைப்படுத்தி என் மருமக எப்படி செய்கிறாள் என்ன நம்ப முடியலையே அதெல்லாம் ஒன்றும் நடக்காதுங்க நடக்கிற வரைக்கும் செய் அவர் நான்ற வரைக்கும் செய் தி பெஸ்ட் எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன் வி கேன் சீ இட் இன் திருக்குறள் அவர் நான்ற வரைக்கும் அந்த ஓர் உருகிற வரைக்கும் அக்னியை போட்டு அக்னியை போடணும் சாபத்தை போடணும்னு அர்த்தம் இல்லை அக்னியை போடணும் பிரெட் கொடு அக்னி போடணும் சாக்லேட் கொடு அக்னி போடணும்னா அங்கே தண்ணி கொடு கிறிஸ்டியன்ஸ் வாக் இன் திஸ் மேனர் கிறிஸ்டியன்ஸ் வாக் இன் திஸ் மேனர் இன்னா செய்தாரை ஒருத்தல் ஒருத்தல்னா பனிஷ் பண்ணுறது இன்னா செய்தாரை ஒருத்தல் அவர் நான் அவர் வைக்கப்படுற அளவுக்கு நன்னயம் செய்து விடல் நல்ல காரியங்களை செஞ்சு விடணும் மைடியா பிரதர் மைடியா சிஸ்டர் கிறிஸ்டியன்ஸ் வாக் இன் திஸ் மேன் அண்ட் நம்பர் தேர்ட்டி பாயிண்ட் நம்பர் தேர்ட்டி வேர்ஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் த லாஸ்ட் வேர்ஸ் பி நாட் ஓவர் கம் ஆஃப் ஈவில் பட் ஓவர் கம் ஈவில் வித் குட் 
we should become overcomers we should never allow evil to overcome us we should never allow anger to overcome us we should never allow bad temper to overcome us we should never allow murder to overcome us stealing to overcome us adultery to overcome us lust to overcome us we cannot be defeated we are the children of god we should be victorious we must be able to overcome evil in tamil we say utpahai there are six things they are called utpahai and sanskrit they say five things panja padakam they put two things together there are six things jesus christ so the things that would defile us from within that anger lust covetousness evil thinking don't allow them to overcome us we are more than conquerors through christ we must be able to overcome all those grodham pahai vairagyam we must be able to overcome that we should not allow those evil things to overcome us we are more than conquerors through christ that strengthens us we can overcome my anger i can overcome my lust i can overcome evil thoughts we must be able to overcome evil by good a good nature christ christ centered living heavenly mindedness must help you overcome the evil things what should we like say so they are mass wealth a mass wealth cross 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 they run away they run away from the country they are called scoundrels they try to escape the law what is the use a heavenly mind it is enough what i have is there enough what i have the boys who work in the office with me they know a house is open or drawers are open i don't say we should not have privacy i don't say it should not lock your uh, valuables no i i don't mean that but the what the use of having all that money after all what that we are going to do with that if i have more money i can spend more for the lord my dear brother my dear sister that heavenly mindedness the thinking of the reality the thinking of the reality when we get up we don't know whether we'll see the night when we go to bed we don't know whether we'll see the morning we see the morning the things are in the hands of the lord the wife of a servant of god yesterday her son in law was talking to me on the same 17th of february husband and wife they had breakfast together after that he used to read the newspaper she used to sit by the side and she'd be reading some book or something he is sitting there reading the newspaper she is sitting there on the chair after a few minutes he saw that he was just keeping uh, she was looking as if she was sleeping he continued to read the newspaper again he saw she was looking sleepy the aged couple went closer found that she is already dead no pain nothing else no shouting no chest pain nothing he was reading the newspaper she was sitting and reading something and the chair just close by he said it was their usual they both of them finished breakfast together so yesterday he was talking to me it's again one year for him for her so we are living we are certain about this uncertainty we are certain about this uncertainty 
live towards that which is said. Be happy. Get ready to face the eventuality. So that good will overcome evil. But don't allow the evil, that lust, lust for more money. What's the use of that money? You get enough, it's good. Having more money, what's that you are going to do with that? Lust for money, covetousness, pride, arrogance. After all, what are we going to do with that? Don't allow evil to overcome you. But overcome evil with good, heavenly mindedness, truth, virtues, realities, facts. That will overcome what is evil. So in Romans chapter 12 we are able to say about 30 points. Christians walk in this manner. And we will continue with chapter 13, 14 and 15 in the days to come. God bless you, but take a decision in your life. This is how a Christian should walk. Today we consider uh, seven point, six points from verse 17. Don't hurt somebody because you are hurt. And verse 17, consider in advance how you can show that you are an yogi is then. And again in verse 17, explore all possibilities within your command as much as lieth in you to live peaceably with all men. And verse 19, don't take uh, vengeance, don't revenge, don't take revenge because that is the Lord's. Give room for the Lord to act. I gave you seven points. Uh, I shared with you what the Lord gave me. Why we should not take vengeance? In verse 20, you do something, you keep on doing, heap. Good thing upon good thing, good thing upon good thing, till he could melt. Till his heart could melt, he, till he could feel ashamed for the wrong he has done. Till that mother-in-law could feel ashamed for the wrong she has done. Till the daughter-in-law could feel ashamed for the wrong things she has done. And finally, don't allow evil to overcome you. You overcome with the virtues, with God-mindedness, with realities, with facts, with satyam. You overcome evil. You must be able to overcome lust. You must be able to overcome evil in this world, liquor, whatever it may be, whatever the bad habit, you must be able to overcome that evil with good. Shall we just we pray that the Lord will give us this grace? Just have your eyes closed for a minute. Take a decision, a deep decision in your heart. I will walk in this manner. Dear Father, I love to pray for you. Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise, we worship you for the words that you have shared with your people. Christians, as Christians, help us. Walk in this manner. Above all, Lord, give every one of us the grace that we will not be overcome by evil, but we will be able to overcome evil by good, by your virtues, by your truth, by the faith. We will overcome evil, O oh Lord. Bless your people, O oh Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen.